Boss and I always say. So um, we're really excited uh, to welcome everyone to my uh, meeting, both for the neighborhood and for families interested in public education, but also families at the Elliott School uh, for an update uh, a few weeks behind schedule for the update, but uh, an update nonetheless to figure out where we are in the construction um, of the North Bennett Street site school. So what was asked of me uh, is to make sure that you as people that are sitting here are aware of who's in the audience and who's here with the team both from the architect firm as well as uh, city planning, planning facilities department um, and Boston Public Schools. So as you know, I work for Boston Public Schools. This project is done through the city of Boston. Uh, so I will introduce Trish Lyons from the director. I'm Trisha Lyons, I'm the director of the Public Facilities Department for the agency project manager. Ryan Wall, Chief of Staff of the Public Facilities Department in Boston. And I'm Ryan Gilly, I'm the Senior Project Manager for the City of Boston Public Facilities Department. And I'm John Gansfield, I'm the Clerk of Arts and I'm the Daily Activity of the Public Facilities Department. I'm Christopher Lane, the Fine Belongings Architects and Project Manager and Project Architect. Hi, I'm Carlson Jones, I'm the Executive Director of Capital Facilities Management for Boston Public Schools. And so also here with me is our new Director of Operations, Mr. Drew Linder, who's joined us a few weeks ago. Ms. Torres is our assistant principal. She's in uh, the front door opening the door for our friends. So um, we're excited to share this information and I will stand to turn it over to Brian and you all, so I get to sit back and relax. Thank you, Tracy. Um, again, I'm Ryan Neal, I'm project manager for the city of Boston, and uh, we had met back in March, I believe, and uh, we promised to meet again. Uh, just to give you an update where we are today with the progress of the school. Uh, I know last time we met, we gave you guys some bad news with the delivery of the school in September. But the good news is we're marching forward. There's still a lot of work to do. There hasn't been any further hiccups with the project. So our intention is to uh, keep driving the contractor, keep pushing it, and we have an expected uh, completion date of uh, late winter, early spring. Okay. Um, if you guys have been by the site recently, you can see uh, all the windows, about 97 of the windows are done, minus the courtyard. Uh, the, the roof is on, the masonry is about 90% complete on the project. Um, on the interior side, um, in Christopher Lane, we'll show you some uh, progress photos that we have, most recent. Actually, I think it's just like last week. It was yesterday, okay. Um, we've got all the contractors inside. We've got the mechanical, electrical, plumbing contractors roughing out all floors. Uh, on the uh, second floor, We've got the drywall uh, in place, the taking is ongoing. And actually, I think the painter is scheduled to come in next week on the second floor. John is there on a daily basis, but uh, so there's some good things happening on this on this in the school. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, back in March, it's a very difficult site, it's challenging, delivery is still uh, always a daily uh, nuisance and uh, challenge for us. Uh, Happening. The drywall being delivered uh, on a weekly basis, we've got mechanicals, the piping, um, and all the mechanical equipment being put on the roof. So, at any given point in time, you see cranes in the background lifting and, and hoisting uh, mechanical equipment and hoisting uh, materials to the building. Uh, I think starting in September, I think uh, the site work, we've got some drainage in the back. On the Street's still going in. Uh, and then around the perimeter of the building, we have all the sidewalks. So both Bennett Street, Salem Street, and I believe Tyleson Street have all new sidewalks, which is going to be a nice uh, session. Uh, we're still minimizing the uh, shutdown of the streets. We have uh, I think Salem Street will be shut down maybe in September for a couple of days with the hot tub. And that will be curved to curve, probably full length of the school. Um, and then the same, um, I think it's somewhere on most end of the edge of how it's going to come down. I think from this point on, the shutdown of the street should be minimal. Um, let's see. I think um, you can see from the photos what we've what we been doing there. Uh, Tile for the bathroom to be started in about 
two weeks on the second floor. And what we're doing, the contract is going from the second, third, and one to the one into the basement. You know, this is men all over the place, but the actual finishing is happening uh, in various sequences. I'm also planning, uh, let's see, I've already met with the school department Tracy on uh, purchasing new furniture, fixtures, and equipment. So we're sitting down with Tracy, seeing what works for her and what works for the uh, program. Uh, and that includes uh, library media center, the science lab, computer labs, and uh, we're expected to uh, draft that out in the next month so we can put these purchases out. Side note too, um, all the classrooms, they, they don't have a day, but I know it's one of the things you push for. All the classrooms have casework. So all built in casework, storage, and there's uh, storage for the teachers, which they lack data. So it's a struggle. Um, so those are one of the things that we work with my goal now to make sure we incorporate it into the classrooms. Um, it's very important for the teaching program and storage for the kids. And that's going to be a beneficial for the high school. You can also see if you go by the school, there's two stair towers being built right now. Uh, there's one on Towson Street and one in the rear part of the line. Those are uh, uh, egress stairs, which will have metal panel exteriors, and uh, those will be wrapped up. So I think that's a that's it in a nutshell. Um, I think I'll turn it over to uh, Christopher Lane here for five goals and then some photos here. And then if you have any questions afterwards, uh, we'll go through So this is going to do a quick overview of some of the plans you've seen before, to show some of the plan layouts, how you were in the building in the classroom and Get into progress with construction. This, of course, is the full plan we're in here right now, which is the future two through four. I'll upper five through eight, and then eight through one. So, this, this again is from the previous presentation showing the extent of work being done. The other we came in, we moved all the existing windows, we added the entire interior for multiple reasons. I'm not going to focus too much on this because you've seen this all the time. This really is just a roadmap of the work being done. On the interior, everything's been done in the new slide of the board. And then Brian had talked. Stub walls are going up. Shoot ends are going up. Some extra hair and camera tools are going up and going up. So just a reminder um, off of Salem Street. Yeah, this becomes the main entry, which was previously the storefront for the, the store at the bank. And so that becomes the new entry and the control vestibule and the ice for all the control home here and the reception into a corridor to one of the classrooms, cafeteria, and a large double height open like purpose space that you can look down into from this level. Under the total 21 classrooms. So just jumping down to the lower level. So if you come down the stairs here, off to the left, this is the lower level of multi-purpose space and computer lab and the art room down the lower level. And then second floor through the fourth floor are all pretty typical as where the classrooms are, and they wrap the perimeter of the building to their own and substantial light from the perimeter of those. So coming up through this main central stair, which will be the main circulation stair, that gives you a main L-shaped corridor that leads each of these classrooms, bathrooms, as well as the two new stair towers that Brian mentioned those. Walkers in these corridors on just about each floor, as well as bathrooms, girls, boys, and staff. Four, third floor is a duplicate of, of the third, of the second. And then you get to the fourth floor because of the lower level the roof of these two ancillary buildings and reducing the footprint. So these were the, the views from into 
picture that we showed previously back in uh, about a year of 2012 or 2013. Um, so coming into the view from the main lobby when you come in, looking across that lobby space, looking across the multi-purpose space into the cafeteria, there's plenty of double point space below. And then standing in the multi-purpose space, looking back into the floor, seeing the large ball. Lower floor corridors, finding the L shape of the building, through the classrooms and the lockers. These were very fundamental. Right here we've got the time or the pants uh, in the kind of slides. And this is just the fourth floor where we had this double height space, clear standard of transom, and it was a lot of natural light into this level um, to the really normal. So this was a rendering that was done of that same entry lobby area. We are coming in the vestibule on the main and looking across the multi-purpose space to go to the cafeteria. And this being a view at the fourth floor, kind of an upper of the corridor, looking down the corridor, seeing the natural waste coming in from the last home. All of the classrooms back in here for this and this was a rendering of and it's a little hard to see what the lighting, but any of you walk by the building, you'll be able to see what this is representing. This is all the new green and yellow tone windows and it's all, all the new bright color patching, replacement of window sills, and damage windows, as well as the activation of the new unit. Have a progress photos. Same thing yesterday and the Friday. Um, Sand Street, we drawn off the old sheet metal entry and putting a new entry. And there is, is the the re reimagination of what were the double home windows at the top screen in the middle with the new storefront going in. Across the other side, or in the back alley area, you can let's see what the two stairs are going in. Jason to show up, the CMU is up for its full height and the stair tower right here, and the foundation has been pulled for the second stair tower that will be in the CMU there soon. Um, Tiles to the building, the fall to the unit, the red window, the red window was installed, and that was the final cleaning done previously on the branch. Mansard's all new roof has been installed. Copper caps and coping is all been installed. Moving inside the building, again, I keep going back to the lobby. When we first come in, this is essentially minus the ductwork and materials laying around the first. This is where you can come in, and you can make out floor on here. This would be the cafeteria and the double height space, showing up a little better here, where you're essentially standing at the glazed wall looking down to the Moving down into the multi-purpose space, looking back up to the corridor and the lobby here, you can begin to imagine that volume and the amount of space that's going on. The corridors do not, depending on what floor you're on, there are different levels of completion. As Bonnie had mentioned, the lake issues are happening in some of the areas. This is a couple of the classroom entries with side lights and stud wall framing. This is similar on another floor where you can see the drywall is up and the classroom entries are starting to take shape and the entry to the common stair. As you get up to what I believe is the third floor, you can see much more drywall here and begin to, to see the corridor taking shape. And at the fourth floor, the exposed beams and the third story lights that are here will be beginning to, to show up. Once you get more drywall here, we can And lastly is the progress in the classrooms. Here, where walls have been insulated again, windows are all in, metal studs are in, to other floors where the drywall is all up and taped. As Brian mentioned, this is one of those alcoves where there will be a countertop, base cabinets, and upper wall cabinets for storage for the students and the teachers. And that occurs in every classroom. This is another example of another classroom.
just wanted to open it up if people had questions. Yeah, I was going to ask if you had any questions about the construction. Yes. What are the dimensions of the placements? Three dimensions. Um, top of my head, actually. I'm trying to get it off the blueprint. Uh, 
uh, Saturday, all new equipment, all new equipment in the kitchen, new furniture for the uh, cafeteria as well. So it's exciting. It's a Robin's rubber. Is it a floor? Is it a floor floor? Is it movable? It's a pound. So you can't say it's a good like basketball. That's exactly what it is. You can. Basically, it's a gymnasium. Oh, so it's a hard. Yeah, and it's a hard oh, okay. rubber. These questions are from my son. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> You're talking to the principal slash athlete. Yes. No, I know. He said, make sure they can play basketball. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a sports floor, you might have okay. some gyms. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any outdoor space at all or not really? Yeah. You know, um, you probably know there's a small hiking area that was used before. Um, what that's used for. Uh, it'll be all the hot top and, uh, you know, you know, there's going to be a dumpster back there. That's where the dumpster's going to be. You wish you got daily trash. But, but eventually the use will be grades five through eight, but right now we're moving in with grades three through eight, with this space, grades two, three, and four, with a playground and additional space. So that's the idea is, you know, we our students right now use, when they were at North Bend a few years ago, the students would walk over and use the lower school uh, playground. Where, as I said, we're, we've been very flexible. We're just so thrilled to have, um, you know, a brand new space that's, you know, going to be amazing for our kids. Maybe we'll figure out the. And I'm sorry for just for accountability, Ryan. What do you mean when you say late spring? Late winter, early spring. I'm very. I mean, I think it's fair with delays to have a date so that, you know, our kids are. We're switching in to the two buildings again this year. We're starting to get compact. There are sacrifices we're making as a school, and I think to hold you guys accountable, it's fair in these meetings to be given that date. It doesn't have to be September 1st, it could be September, but I mean, it's not obviously right. September, but yeah. I, think it's it's not fair. Fair. I think it's fair for us to ask for something more than late winter or early spring. Right, it, you know, I I don't want to nail down a date and give you a date that's not uh, true. I mean, I can no, tell you, I can tell sure. you it's going to be January 1st, and it doesn't happen, then you can say, Brian, what did you do? You know, what you said, you told January 1st. This is a daily challenge with the contracting and the city to get it done. We're over the hump, and I'm happy to see that. We're over the hump beyond the, uh, the foundations are done, the steel is done, the concrete floors are done. Now we're fitting it out just like the interior of the building would be, just like this thing with walls, uh, bathrooms, kitchen, and so forth. So, um, we are targeting uh, late, which I'm saying March. Late March? Yes. So, um, with that said, we're trying to expedite this and look at other avenues to accelerate the schedule, which is second shift, Saturdays. Some of the problems is you decide I can in the day, and then some of you are closed. It's, it's frustrating. Well, I think they also Long would, would be willing to compromise. I mean, you know, we all live in the room that do a lot of right. construction in our homes in this neighborhood. Right. Right. And I think maybe we, I mean, I would pull the papers before you assume their opinions. I think they want you to know that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree, but you know, we get a lot of feedback, especially from the neighbors, the butters, um, that you get aggravated when we're there at 6 o'clock at night. Um, so, you know, in respect to them, too, um, we've got to look at all that. I don't think a lot of people will want some hand hammering and banging at 9 o'clock at night. But we're looking at what's finished for that. I mean, painting and flooring is not noisy. So why can't we work a second shift? Why can't we accelerate that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. So those are the important things we're looking at to try to, you know, nail down the schedule. We want to turn as soon as possible. So do you think we're able to do those things in that question? The completion days? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's what we're going to look at. Like, I have a schedule meeting tomorrow.
Um, currently on Tyleson Street and on North Bennett Street, the sidewalks are not up to the handicap code. What's the plan for that for you know, students walking around the building? And the streets are also very narrow. I, I don't know that there's a solution, but what is the plan because it's a school? Well, I know we've submitted our plans to public works and because of the existing conditions, it's very difficult to meet the exact you can see the ramps that were installed many years ago um, at the curb How do you say on this handicap accessible? Yeah. The tiles didn't work better right, or not. Right, right. So I know in John, you know, we're raising some of the curbs up in North Bennett, we set it up, and pouring new concrete curbs. Um, we've looked at all that to make sure it's accessible. And Tyleson Street, I think a little questionable because it's so narrow, but I know North Bennett's been good, and I think we're still that, that North Bennett will be accessible? On, on, we're only going on the school side. I know yeah, the other exactly. side is not. I yeah, yeah. But exactly. I just want to make sure kids can travel. And Tileston is an issue, and so maybe facilities needs to look at what you do when you have a school there but through transportation. When you get the sidewalk, it's probably this right. narrow. Right. Um, I have concerns about that for the safety of the kids there, and especially because that's part of the path to get to the lower school. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's again, it's both. Yeah. And again, I think um, the district or well, Tracy and her staff needs to look at how they're going to manage kids back and forth. I know before you use the back door, or not walk in. Mm -hmm. I know that's. Yeah, that's the that's the route that we took. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see what where the stair tower is and what the egress looks like. If there's a that fence that will be across that parking. Yes, new fence going back up. So, but it, it has a uh, main game. Are you repeating the streets? So, yeah. Okay, because I don't know before we go on. No, it's going to say not. Yeah. If you're repeating the streets anyway, you can raise the level of the street. At least on those two sides. So it brings it to the level of the curve. So then you don't have a problem. It's called well, the shared street concept. It's like a sidewalk. It works with narrow sidewalks. It makes them accessible. We have a precedent for that. Also. Yeah. So, so who in facilities is responsible for a, a compliance issue like that. Compliance issue built into a sidewalk. Uh-huh. Yeah, sidewalk. You guys have probably public works. If we were to extend the size of the sidewalk on Tileston, that would make that Tileston. Right, I mean, right. Who in public, who in facilities looks at a school and says, here's the entrance, the egress, this is safe for kids, this is not safe for kids? Who does that study? Because yes. public works yes. just says it's not possible. I know their right. role. What's your role? My role is public facilities department. I'm guessing some of the Boston public schools will be looking at an entrance in where kids would go in and come out of the school. Who, who, who would we have public, We have Boston public schools here. Um, but I, I'm, I'm questioning this. I'm just a little, I'm not sure your question. Tileston is a very, Tileston and North Bennett. I've mean, heard your question. Okay. I'm not sure what you're asking. What I'm asking is, is the school going to be safe for kids to walk sure. in and out of it? And specifically on Tileston Street, Absolutely. will accommodations be made or do they need to be made right. to make sure it's safe for students to walk in and out of the school? Correct. So I guarantee you that building facilities departments are not going to give us a building that doesn't have safe entrances for egress and entrance. Aside from the side, the narrow side, why do not have to walk in the right. So the doors that we get as part of this project are going to be handicap accessible, and safe for children to enter the building, staff to enter the building, deliveries, everything else. Beyond the school is a different state, a different subject area. So you're talking about the sidewalks on Thompson Street. On the side of the school. Correct, on the side of the school. Yeah. If, yeah. Because we're already sitting in the park, we can work together. And as part of this question, we can do. Oh, sorry. So, so I think the issue is once we turn the building over to the school, we have entrances and exits that are handicap accessible. Right. It'll be up to the school to monitor whether or not they allow kids to go out on the Tileson Street, which I don't think the plan is currently to have kids exiting on the Tileson Street. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. The food rebuild the sidewalks. Right. 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 Right.
I realized that that children's safety is paramount, but we're, all of our kids are used to walking on the sidewalks in the North End as it is, far away from the school. I mean, I think that if you can't you can't physically change the size of that street. I think that's a great suggestion of a shared street. Uh, and all of our kids use all of the schools, right? So right. we're used especially if this is a new school that has common areas where people may be able to be. I mean, yeah, I mean, they're not kindergartners. They, they, they don't work outside. Kindergartners will use this. And, and, and something like that you mentioned there with the shared desk, that would be something you need to improve on the course of time. That's why, right. right. since they're here, I'm trying to bring it up. And not here, but we're not going to work. A lot of the facilities where the construction is in the city of Boston. For public works, and I can't speak to that, but obviously, there's a lot of variables.
um, as we come a little bit closer to more completion. Um, I think having Christopher here, Brian, I think it's, it's really important for the community and the neighborhood to see the progress. I know it's been a long stretch, um, and we're thankful for the neighborhood because without this neighborhood, we wouldn't we wouldn't be at this place. Um, so you know, as Brian has said, we met in March. I think what we will should do is once school starts, is have another meeting. Um, certainly, the community or the neighborhood can reach out. Uh, Maria Lanza is our um, North End liaison. Um, she would be the person to connect with. Um, if we need to have another update earlier than that, and I know John is John's cell phone is everywhere posted. Um, that's a part of the work. So um, if there are issues, John is the one to reach out. But and as I said, that we're we're so excited for this to be finished. Um, but we also were aware that we want to make sure that it's really ready for our children um, and it's not halfway done and they're, they're still working while we have children there so we're you know we're committed um, we are squished but you know we're we're gonna figure it out and do it. So how many strands of each class? Four. So we talked about it. So how many classes there, there are 21 rooms in this building. Mm -hmm. um, some are not classrooms, some are we have the art room, we have a technology, we have science labs. Oh, yeah. so there's, there's 21 classrooms and then there's the three the 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 enrichment spaces. Right. There's 21 classrooms. And then what would you mean to They're all, all, for this whole building will go and relocate to the North Bend Street School site. And then this building. Because we were here a couple months ago. So, so second, third, and fourth grade. We'll eventually move back here. Right, but in the meantime, we'll store screen for the second grade? All right, yes. Right. So we'll have? Second grade will stay. Kindergarten one, kindergarten two, grade one and grade two will stay at the lower school charter street. Okay. And then grades three, four, five, six, seven, and eight will be at North Bennett. And then in September of 20, 2019. So, so three, eight, four, four strands. Well, we're not there yet, though, Lord. So we're we're still we're moving through. So by the time you know it's a progression, then this will be finished by the time we need to right. Everything will be right on schedule. Good to go. So yes, your question. Will you actually is your plan say hypothetically? We would, we would move. Um, we've talked about this, and the teachers packed at the end of this year thinking that we would be moving. Um, the hope is, you know, I've talked to Brian, that's why we've had meetings around furniture and making sure that it's, it's ordered and ready to go because miracles happen. And, you know, this, <laughs> the, you know, this is a hardworking group that, you know, keep pushing forth, and, you know, we, we know it will get done in late winter, early spring. Or earlier in the late winter. But we will move. 